Hi everybody, this is Kevin, and welcome back to another video, and today I would like to share my thoughts on Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest Episode 14, which is the start of the second half of the first season, which means we have a brand new opening and ending, and I'm going to go into greater detail of them at the end of the video, just because the opening in particular has a lot of spoiler characters who haven't appeared yet, and if you haven't read the manga, you're not going to know who they are, so we'll just save that for the end, and it's great to finally see them in the anime adaptation. So, last week we had a recap episode, episode 13.5, if you could believe that, which is very strange for a modern anime series because a lot of times modern anime get their 12 or 24 episode seasons. In Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest case, though, 25 episodes, and I guess 26 if we count the recap episode. I'm hoping that we still get 25 actual episodes, but uh, they do that. And then they take a year or two off, continue with the next season, in stark contrast to how it used to be done, with new episodes each week, the anime would get caught up to the manga, then they do filler arcs, etc, etc. But looking into it, it turns out that Mad Mole's Japanese voice actor was actually recast. Apparently he breached his contract, and not only was he fired from Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest, but all of his other active anime roles, if you can believe that, so I think not only did they serve as doing a recap episode last week and the one minute preview featuring Celine and Irene, but I think they are frantically looking for a replacement for Mad Mole because in this episode, episode 14, Mad Mole has a couple of lines. So, you know, they found the replacement. I honestly didn't even notice a difference between the voice actors because he just he sounded like Mad Mole. He was doing the cha cha. You know, I, I love that little uh, nervous habit that Mad Mole has, I guess. But anyway, episode 14, I, I really enjoyed it. It mainly featured Wendy vs. Nebero, and similar to Urza and Loxus' battle from episode 13, where it took up the majority of the episode, although there was some other stuff with Lucy's group and Kana trying to capture the rest of the fairy tale members in the cards, and then Natsu and Happy, some funny stuff with Happy imagining Toka and Carla. But of course, I have a number of screenshots as well as some comparisons to the manga to go over. So let's get started. Uh, this right here is from the ending of the second ending, which is just a great shot of Team Natsu minus Happy and Carla all hugging each other arm in arm. So great shot right there. But the episode begins with Mirajane and Elfman continuing their battle against Scullion and Mad Mole. They've been battling since like episode 9 or 10, haven't they? It's been it's been a number of episodes, mostly off screen, but they do these little moments where they're talking. And in this instance, Scullion and Mad Bull are, are saying, all right, we got to retreat because Wraith has been defeated. Nebru's going berserk. He's going to do Dragon Force, which is forbidden in the fifth generation Dragon Slayers. And then Kiri has been defeated as well. And Mad Bull's like, well, I mean, the master's going to be pissed. It's going, well, we got to We got to leave now. We can't keep fighting. It's a stalemate. And so you have uh, the peanut gallery over here. Gray is saying, all right, I'll go in there and defeat Mira and Elfman. And they make their, their derpy faces, which this is my first comparison to the manga, where they continue to make the derpy faces. It's just perfect. Yet I love how the anime still captures the soul of the manga in that regard. <laughs> so cute. But, uh, oh yeah, it cuts over to my future wife. Don't tell Lucy, but my other future wife, Kyria. It should have been me, damn it, on top of Loxus. And, you know, Kyria de destroyed the orb. I think there's only two orbs left, which, uh, that may not be the case at the end of this episode here. But she's crawled all over, all over Loxus saying, I'm gonna devour him, what a fine man! And another comparison right here. You notice, there's a lot of things that the men of culture will notice here. But first of all, Urza's there. Urza is not there in the anime. Uh, for you feet fans, <laughs> that's in the manga. <laughs> and then her undies are more clean in the anime, whereas they're tattered in the manga. If you notice anything else, please leave a comment and let me know, but... <laughs> there you go. So this is when Scullion is communicating to Kyria, saying, Get the hell out of there, Kyria, we gotta retreat! I just found a tasty looking man! And it's a more Kyria boobage action. Again, like in the manga, there's little tiny panels of this. But in the anime, they get the, the boobage on full display of Kyria. I'm telling you, the animators and myself are big fans of Kyria. So she's in love. What a fine man. I'll be back for him later. <laughs> and then Skellion's like, get the fuck out of here. And then he mentions the Dark Dragon Slaying Knights, uh, which are some other characters we're going to see very soon, actually. Very, very soon. 
So he's telling Nebru to retreat because, you know, Skullion's in charge of this group. And Nebru's like, no, I'm not leaving. I'm going to fight Cuckoo. I eat Cuckoo. And that's exactly what he does. There's uh, Wendy, the cocoon dragon. And, you know, he keeps taunting Wendy. And Wendy says, that's enough. And breaks free from her cocoon, activating Dragon Force. So here's another comparison. Very well done. Um, you know, I like how in the manga, the, the coloring, the, the shading of the hair and everything, but obviously she, her hair turns pink in the, in the anime. She's got the wings. You see the wings on her arms as well. And again, you see it right there. And it shows, for those wondering, the camera like hands up as, as the anime is going on. So it shows like her whole body. If you're wondering if there's, oh, there's a difference here that you can't see her legs or whatever. No, it like pans up in the, in the anime. So, you know, as close as you can get, I suppose. So Nebru, he's going to do his uh, Dragon Force transformation as well because he notices Wendy's doing it. And Wendy's like, uh-oh, I'm out of my league. And he starts overpowering her. You see his transformation. Again, there it is in the manga. I think I had went, yeah, Wendy's face. Where was it? It was one of these. It was right here. So you see that? His Dragon Force activation. And then there it is in the manga. And he starts beating the ever-living hell out of this poor girl. Poor Wendy. But don't worry, she's able to overcome. Uh, you know, she's getting her ass kicked here. He's he's going to town. And you see Wendy has, has the pink hair because of Dragon Force. She powers down because she's just been defeated. And what happens is she starts crying, thinking about how in the past, although if you remember back to the Tartarus arc, her and Carla were the ones who defeated Azel all by herself. And then Mess came to rescue her. Uh, but, you know, that was the first time she activated Dragon Force all on her own. But she has a little similar thing going on here where she remembers all her friends. And she's like, you know, I, I've always been with my friends. I had Natsu in the gang. I had Carla. And I even had Sheria, which, man, we got a cameo for Sheria here. So the poor girl is, is crying, thinking of giving up. But again, remember, she defeated Azel of Tartarus all by herself. Well, of Carla cheering her on. And that's the same thing in the manga. You see her, she's, she's crying, she's battered and bruised, and then remembering Natsu, Carla, and Sheria. And then she gets up and says, I don't think I can do this twice. And she has, similar to how Lucy had her magical girl transformation when she activated Star Dress Mix, Wendy has her own magical girl transformation right here, which this was not in the manga. So check this out. She gets up again, she's using enchantment, the memory of you, who could it be? And let's see, look at her go, look at Wendy go, she's transforming, and look at this, you get the full-on magical girl transformation, similar to Lucy's star dress, a brand new outfit, and it's like, what, whose outfit is that, wait a minute, and you see, look at the braid in her hair, it's, it's Wendy Belsarion, <laughs> said uh, Irene Bel Belsarion, but you know, Irene is Urza's mother, but I'm calling her Wendy Belsarion because she's using Irene's powers to enchant herself. So that's what she does. She, she enchants herself with the memory of Irene because at the very end of the first, the original fairy tale series, Irene took control of Wendy's body, if you guys remember. So there it is in the manga. I'm gonna have to say that I actually prefer the manga better. She just looks more fierce in that pose whereas you know she has more of the, the cutesy moe look in the anime what do you guys think i mean she just has the more determined look on her face there but continuing on uh she starts beating the ever-loving hell out of nebaru and then nebaru transforms even more he does dragonification and transforms to a full-on dragon which again, I'm gonna have to give the edge over to the manga for this as well. There's just so much more detail in his dragon form. Like you see the veins, all the different spines coming out of him, his teeth, everything. Like you see it here, you don't really see the vein or anything, but you see like the spines and everything and all that. Much more detailed in the manga, I will say. So what happens is the spirit of Irene shows up to aid Wendy and talk to her and, and basically explain how to use her magical powers. So it's cool to see Irene. Here she is in the manga. You know, there's some more boobage in the manga, I will say. You can kind of see the boobage here, but they make her look more like a spirit. And obviously the hair is going to cover the boobs, but, you know, we, we can see some more uh, some more curvage like the, the manga does. Please and thank. But Irene's back. 
And so Wendy's like, I, I, I want the power to defeat him, but not kill him. And Irene's like, oh, it's the same difference. And she's like, no, don't do it. So there's Wendy holding up the hand, and Irene's the one controlling her body at this point. And again, they're kind of, they're, they're centered a little in the anime, because here it was in the manga. Again, some more curvage, you know, you even see some more of her body. But in the anime, oh, gotta hide it. Like, what the hell? Why are we hiding it, man? Get out of here. <laughs> but what happens is Neburu is defeated, and Irene says that, you know, he lost his magic energy. He's not dead, but he lost his magic energy. And Wendy's back in her, her um, normal form again. And Irene's like, all right, I'll, I'll hang around with you and help you if you need it. And I, I'm always there. So now Wendy has a new power-up. And I always like how Fairy Tale does this, where they have power creep, obviously, when they go up against new villains and, and whatnot. But they're able to explain the ass poles in a more believable way. Because, again, Irene was in Wendy's body and, and in the original series. And, you know, when she was defeated, her residual memory is still there. So it makes sense. But, again, I mean... You know, we just gotta talk about this because they're clearly censoring her. Here she is in the manga, and then going back to the original, the original series. This is the original manga, Irene, but this is also her in the anime. So, okay, that was her design in the manga, obviously, but they didn't they didn't censor her in the original anime. And we see her on full display constantly. She was a baddie, <laughs> but here they're covering up her a little. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think in the comments down below. So after this, after the main battle, Natsu and Happy see the explosion, and then they, they show up, figure out what's going on with Wendy. Uh, this, dude, I love this scene in particular because this is right after Natsu's battle against Wraith. He was dealing with ghosts, and he sees Wendy is talking to Irene. Wendy's the only one who can see her, so Natsu assumes she's talking to a ghost. And he's like, I'm going to become a thought form again. He starts, like, tapping Wendy. Like, are you, Wendy, are you okay? Are you hallucinating? And I just love the faces all three of them are making. You have Happy. Like, look at Happy's face. He's just looking at him like, what are you guys doing? Natsu, like, come on, Wendy. Wendy's like, I'm fine, Natsu. It's just this image. If I could pick one image to, you know, capture the heart and soul of fairy tale, this would be one of them. I mean, just look at him. <laughs> look at Happy. In, in, in particular, Happy's face. He's just like... Just another day. <laughs> Just another day with Natsu. And here it is in the manga, which, oh man, I cropped Happy's face out of it, but <laughs> I think the anime did that one better. Like, man, I think the anime does the, the cute scenes and the derpy face is almost better than the manga. But anyway, so they're coming up with a new plan. Irene told Wendy how to enchant Toka and separate Toka the X Seed from Faris the White Mage. So this prompts Happy to think about the two of them, because remember, he saw Toka. It's like, oh, it's another X seed. Happy Sama. Carla, happy. And Happy's like, oh, which one do I pick? I don't know. They're both so cute. <laughs> so, <laughs> so good, man. Happy's in the love triangle. So it cuts back over to Kana, Lucy, Gray, and Juvia. They eventually captured Mira Jane and Elfman. They also got Makarov, Gajel, Levy, and Pantherle. I love how Gajel is the only one still putting up a fight in the card. And uh, <laughs> as they were capturing them all, they were talking about, okay, you know, Loxus is going to be trouble, and same with Jalal. And then it, it cuts to Loxus lying down after he was defeated. Well, him and Urza were, were in a, a stalemate. It was a draw. But it also cuts to Jalal, who is still patiently waiting for Urza. <laughs> Remember, Urza tied him up. He's still patiently waiting. <laughs> oh my god. Absolutely hilarious. And, and that's when Kana says that she can locate Loxus because he's part of the guild, but she's going to have trouble finding Jalal. To which Lucy's like, all right, Plu, we'll go find Jalal. And we get to see Plu again, which every time I see Plu, just makes me think of Raid Master and what a great series that is. If, you know, you've read and watched Fairy Tale, you've read and watched Eden Zero, you gotta read Rave Master. Rave Master is probably the best story of all, the entire Mashima universe. I freaking love Rave Master. So good. So there you go. Plu's there as well. Boom, boom. The Rave Bearer. The legend, Plu. So there's Lucy's determined look. I'm always going to take a moment to highlight how beautiful Lucy is, my number one waifu. And there we have Happy rescuing Carla. Why are you staring at me? Because Happy's he's in love. There's Carla. And then <laughs> Wendy's explaining how she can separate the two of them. And again, the derpy faces, man. Look at her. Look how cute she is. <laughs> so with that, 
with that, remember, there's, there's still two orbs remaining. It cuts to Mess destroying an orb, and then the White Mage saying, Mess, come quickly! Because remember, Happy threw the orb, the Lacrima, at her, and it knocked her out. And then Mess destroys that one, destroying the fifth and final Lacrima, unsealing Alderaan, the Wood Dragon God. And it was a funny line, too, where the White Mage said, I should have just had Mess do this from the start, because he can just teleport everywhere. So <laughs> we get to see Mess again. And there's there's the big boy, Alderaan. All five Lacrima have been destroyed. The White Mage is going insane. Yes, do it. I'm going to take his power. And then the sleepy boy is, is in pain, and he's waking up. So that's the end of the episode. Uh, next week, lots of good stuff. I really enjoyed this episode. I mean, there's, again, some instances where the manga is going to be better. I, I thought, you know, I, I th also thought that the Urza Loxus fight in the manga was better. Probably the Wendy Nebru fight was better in the manga as well. Especially because how it appeared the anime censored some of Irene's boobage. But I'll always prefer the anime because of the music and the voice acting. And I can't wait to hear the voice acting. Hopefully Rachel Robinson reprises her role as Irene in the English dub. All the other English voice actors pretty much reprise their roles, so I'm sure she'll return as well. Uh, but now, let's go over the opening and the ending, and <laughs> look at the thumbnail here. I actually saw this on Twitter. This is some nice fan art of Lucy and Celine swapping outfits. God damn! <laughs> but, you know, there's no official upload of this yet on the Crunchyroll or Fairytale website, so we gotta rely on uh, Sasuke Uchiha. <laughs> so, let's check this out. This is the second opening. Um, I kind of, well, I, I guess it's mute, I'll just talk over, but it shows all our heroes standing on, on the cliff, ready to continue the hundred years quest and seal or slay the dragons, whichever you choose. I'm all fired up. I love that shot right there. Let's just see of, of the whole group and Happy and Carla included. I love the whole color scheme too. There's Carla. Oh, it's going really fast. These guys, which yes, it highlights the Jobber Squad of Fairy Tale because believe it or not, in the coming episodes, these dudes in particular have a pretty important role. Max, Warren, Nab, Lackey, the rest of them. Like, dude, they're all there. So that they're there for a reason. This is this is the arc after the Alderaan arc, which I, I wasn't sure if they were gonna get to this in this season. Because again, we're going 25 episodes. This is episode 14, next week will be episode 15. So I guess we're gonna get to the arc after Alderaan and at least start it. I don't think I don't know if we'll adapt the entire uh, following arc, but yeah, there's the characters from there. There's uh, the white mage in a different outfit, Faris. That's her name. Although they haven't revealed her name as Faris, they just have it on on behind the voice. I mean, we all know. So some of the villains for um, the next arc, who work with Celine. Okay, so Alderon he woke up, but apparently there there's gonna be. The, um, oh, it went too fast. These guys are, are villains in the Alderaan arc, so they're gonna show up. Lots of good stuff. There's, uh, Diabolus, Madmul, Skeleon, Nebru, Kyria, Wraith, and the Master. Toka, Jalal, Juvia, Bra Brandish, which, yes, you may have thought Brandish just had her, her one cameo in that episode early on in the series, but no, Brandish has a pretty important role in 100 Years Quest. She's not done yet. We got some more Brandish. There's Aldron waking up. There's Celine. Oh, yeah. There's Ignia. Oh, there's Suzuku. We haven't seen him yet. There's Urza with Jalal. Nice. Gray and Juvia. Let's see. There's Wendy. There's Lucy. Oh, yeah. Best girl. There's the moon. Oh yeah, Natsu continuing his battle against Alderaan and Lucy. Doing a Lucy kick, Gray! Doing his, yep, his demon devil transformation. There's some more Wendy and Irene, yep, in the opening now. Urza continuing her battle. That's the next arc, man. There's Natsu, up, oh. And then there's the whole team. Throwing down against Celine in her dragon form. Look at that, man. Look at that. I'm all fired up. What a great opening, man. And the music was great. I love I, I love seeing it. Uh, yeah, it's crazy the characters they showed here. Let's, I'm going to go back. There's Brandish again. Celine, Ignea. And then... And then there's Suzuka, which, man, I can't even believe he's going to be in the first season. But 
Anyway, so let's take a look at, at ending two. Uh, this one, I, I prefer the song in ending two to opening two, but it's still pretty good. Um, you know, the visuals, the, the ending, the opening always has more of an upbeat attitude to it, whereas the ending is, you know, it's the ending of the episode. So it shows our heroes all battered and bruised with the, the fairy tale flag. How can they overcome? I'll just fast forward a little because, you know, uh, Natsu's getting up. Everyone else gets up behind him. Lucy, Gray, Urza, and Wendy. And there's Toka again looking on. There's... Oh, that's the next... Dude, that's the next arc. That's uh, not Toka. <laughs> that's Ferris. And our heroes standing strong. <laughs> you gotta love it. And fast forward a little bit more, we get the X Seeds, and then where the episode began, all our heroes, where we began this review anyway, right up here. So, yeah, I really enjoyed episode 14. I don't think I'm ever going to do a Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest review and say I didn't like the episode. Maybe I will, but I love this series too much to, to hate it, even when I do have my little nitpicks where, you know, Irene isn't sexy enough or whatever, which I think is true. I mean, she's definitely sexier in the manga, as I showed you in this video, but... You know, leave me your thoughts in the comments down below. Uh, next week, we'll talk about episode 15 and whatever else happens and uh, all that good stuff. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and peace out. 99.